Motivation matters. When your motivation is sinking, that is not good. And you need to get it back. Maybe ask yourself, what is it that is causing you to lose motivation? Because if you're losing motivation, that means you were motivated before. So something happened that caused you to lose that motivation. In this video, we're going to discuss motivation, how you can get it back, and other topics surrounding that. This video was motivated by an email that I received fairly recently, I have it here. The subject is seeking advice on avoiding the sinking of motivation. And you can apply this to anything because we need motivation for everything in life. Hi TMS, I hope you're well. Just watched your Jack of all trades video and loved it. I just had a few questions. In that video, you said something like, people take math classes and at first they are very motivated. They ask questions and when things get harder, the motivation sinks. I'm a computer science student this sinking of motivation is happening for the last few trimesters. Do you have any advice on how to avoid the sinking? Also, despite having interest in various areas, I can't consider myself a jack of all trades because I'm simply not. Can you share tips on becoming one? Thanks and have a great day. So thank you so much for sending this message. The person's name is Manzil. I really appreciate it. It's a great question. It's an incredible question. So first let's talk about this, this sinking of motivation and then we'll address the jack of all trades issue. When you are taking classes, it is very true, and I can see this in math books too because you see the effort that people put in at the beginning of the book. You know, if I pick up this book here and I look through it, although this one is in pretty good shape, uh, I don't think anyone's really worked through it except me. Uh, you, typically, you see writing uh, at the beginning of the first few chapters. You see highlighting. You, may, you might find someone's homework in here. But once you get to the latter chapters, it's gone. Because people always start motivated. And it's good. It's good to go in motivated, right? First day of class, you want to go in there and, and you want to just be ready to go, right? You want to squash it. You want to do the best you can be. This is the only time in your life that you're taking that math class. So make it count. Make it count. What happens is people lose that motivation because it's hard to keep it up because math is hard. Life is hard, right? You go to school every day. You're doing homework. Maybe you don't like the teacher. Maybe the test had questions that you've never seen. Maybe you don't like the people in the class. Maybe the school is a long drive and you can't find parking. I know parking on university campuses is an issue. It always has been. It, it's always been terrible in my experience. So all of those things weigh down upon you. And so you lose your motivation. So an easy fix for this, an easy fix, is to just sit back and do some self-reflection. Ask yourself, why am I taking this class? What is the point of taking this class? And do I, do, do I need to do well in this class? An easy mental exercise you can add to that is the following. Let's say it's February, because we're in February right now. And you say, okay, the, the class is going to end in May. After May, that's it. This class is your history. So you can either get an A or you can not get an A. You're going to feel much better in May when the class is over and you have an A. So give it your 100% because it's limited. This time you have in college, this time you have in this specific class where you're struggling, where you're lacking motivation is limited. It's finite. It's going to end. It's not like a job where you know you have a job and you have to go to work every day. Maybe you don't like the job. That's even more frustrating because that's you, you can't quit your job because you have to make money. You need money to live. Whereas the class has an ending point. It has a finish line. I used to have uh, this friend who was a teacher. He would say, one of the good things about teaching was that the semester ends. And that's kind of a negative outlook from a teacher's perspective, right? I was like, well, I didn't really agree with him, but I, I, I thought it's kind of a, a good outlook too. You know, the semester ends and you get to start over. At the same time, you know, a lot of times when the semester's over, 
you know, you know the students, you, know, you kind of have a bond with the students, you know, you like the students. And so I always felt a little bit sad at the end of every semester, to be honest. Every, every single class I've ever taught at the end of the semester, I look back and I felt a little bit sad, you know, because that was it. That was the end of an era. And for most students, when a class is over, they feel relieved. But then years pass and they look back on that class and they reminisce it. You know, they think about, oh, I should have done better. Oh, I should have studied harder. You don't want to have those feelings. So keep working hard. Remember, there's a finite time limit. So two things you can do, just to recap. Ask yourself, why are you in the class? Remind yourself why you need an A, why you're trying to do well. What are your goals in life? And then remind yourself that the time limit is finite. It's going to end. Give it 100%. You can relax when the class is over. There's time for play later, right? Play time is later. It's work time. When you're in that class, do your best, right? This is your one life. Make it count. Let me answer the next question, which is also very, very good. It's about the jack of all trades. He says, also, uh, despite having interest in various areas, I can't consider myself a jack of all trades because I'm simply not. Can you share tips on becoming one? Thanks and have a great day. Yeah, yes I can. I can share tips on becoming a jack of all trades. Work harder. I know that's a really weak answer, but I think that being a jack of all trades, and this is just my personal opinion, is much, much better than being extremely good at one thing. If you're good, if you're pretty good at many things, I think that can help you in life because it allows you to be more fluid. It allows you to be more flexible. Let me just take a, a simple example. Let, let, let's say you go to college uh, for, for mathematics and you say, okay, I want to get a math degree and I want to be a math teacher, let's say. And then let's say that you finish college and then you become a math teacher. And let's just say that you don't like it. For whatever reason, you don't like teaching, right? Some people don't like teaching. I have always loved teaching. To me, teaching, it almost doesn't even seem like work. I absolutely love teaching. It is like my favorite thing in the world to do. But some people don't like it. So what happens if you're one of those people, right? What do you do? You know, I had a friend who, uh, he was French, and he got his PhD in chemistry. He wanted to study mathematics. But in France, there's this test you take, and apparently based on the scores of that test, like you can't study math if your scores are too low. It's a different system. I don't know much about the French system, but he was a really, really smart guy, right? Really, really good at math. He used to help me with my proof writing and advanced calculus. That's how good he was, you know, baby proofs. And whiz guy, right? Went to Notre Dame, got his PhD from Notre Dame. He said the PhD was easy. I mean, it could be because he was just really smart. In any case, he never felt he was good enough to do math. He got his PhD in chemistry, did research for years, did DNA research, worked at like four different universities, always had a hard time in academia, never liked teaching. Fast forward, he ended up working at some like event planning company in some administrative role, making a lot of money and he seemed happy. So all of that work and then he ended up somewhere else. The key is you have to stay fluid because sometimes your plans don't work out. So by having many skills, by being good at many things, I think it keeps you more fluid. You know, if you're in a position at work where you don't like your job, if you're open to new things, you know, keeping that open mind, hey, maybe I can do this, you know, or, or having those skills, or at least being willing to acquire those skills is gonna help you more. So I think being a jack of all trades helps you more in life than being really, really, really good at just one thing. So how do you become one? Again, my answer is just continually work at it. I am constantly working at trying to be you know, the best version of myself in every possible way. I exercise, uh, I do mathematics. I try to train my mind and my body every single day and, and try to get better at many things. And the truth is some people are just naturally better at some things. I mean, they are, I mean, they really are. You know, I've known people who are extremely good at working with their hands. I have a friend, uh, hung out with him uh, just a few days ago, and he can build anything with his hands. The guy's a genius. He can take apart a car, put it back together. He can build you know, electronic devices with circuits. Brilliant, right? Never went to college, completely self-taught. But he has this like hands-on skills that I don't have, and I feel like I have to work harder to get those skills. So everyone has different skills. So yeah, that's my answer. If anyone else has advice uh, on sinking motivation 
or on becoming a jack of all trades, on becoming good at many things, leave a comment. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Whenever you leave comments, it does help other people. Also, if you want to learn mathematics, I do have math courses. Check out my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. They're actually uh, on the Udemy platform, but if you get the courses, please use the links in my description. And if you get anything from this video, it should be that one, losing motivation is normal. It happens to everyone. You know, I've taught so many classes for so many years and I've seen so many students. I have so many math books and I've seen the writing in the books. People always come in super motivated and then the motivation falls. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's how it is normal. You have to fight that feeling and you have to remind yourself, you know, why you're there and remind yourself courses in college are finite. You know, they, they only last a few months and then it ends. Do your best while you're there because 20 years from now, chances are you're not going to be in college. You're not. You're probably not going to be there. You don't, who knows where you're going to be in 20 years, but probably not in that same class. Until next time, good luck. Keep doing mathematics.